Hey there, Alex Kidman here, and today I hold in my hands a ThinkPad, a business laptop by Lenovo. Very distinctive kind of style, but they're very much workhorse machines, let's face it. Great little laptops, not so much great as mobile phones. But of course, Lenovo doesn't just own the ThinkPad brand, which it bought from IBM. It also owns the Motorola brand, which it bought from Google. So what it's done is it's created a hybrid of those two brands in the ThinkPhone by Motorola, which I'm just going to refer to as the ThinkPhone because it's a lot easier to say. The ThinkPhone is pitched as a business phone first and foremost, in the same way that the ThinkPad is a business laptop. The ThinkPhone sells in Australia for $999 outright, which places it sort of at the bottom end of premium in this market at this point in time. Obviously, international pricing can vary a fair bit. But is it worth its 999 bucks? Well, let's take a look. On the design front, look, from the front, this looks very much just like any other Android phone you'd care to name. 6.6 inch PLED display with support for up to 144 hertz refresh rates. Now that's nice to see. What's also nice to see with this is that you actually get the choice of those refresh rates. A lot of phones will give you a 60 hertz standard and then just an auto mode that goes up to however fast the phone screen goes. This does have an auto mode, but you can also choose to set it at 60 hertz or 120 hertz or 144 hertz if you like that silky smooth scrolling. And obviously, with this as a business phone in mind, they're not really looking at the gaming market for 144 hertz. But equally, if the boss isn't looking, no one's stopping you. It's really only when you flip it to the sides or to the back that you start to see that ThinkPad DNA. So on the side, there's this little red button. It's inventively called the red key. And it's basically an app launching button of a single tap. Or from a double tap, you can launch Motorola's Ready for Software. I'll have a little bit more to say about that just shortly too. At the back though, this very much looks the part of a ThinkPad. I mean, it's got a little embossed ThinkPad, or in this case, ThinkPhone logo at the base. So that carbon fiber kind of look to it. I quite like this in the same way that I quite like it on a ThinkPad, to be fair. It's not exactly elegant stylish as much as it is business stylish, but yeah, some people definitely will like that. It's a nice feeling phone. It feels robust in the hand, not too slippery, which is always a good thing. I would, being me, still probably throw a case on it, and it might be interesting to see what kind of cases you could find for a niche phone like this. So the ThinkPhone is built around Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 processor, which is a slightly curious choice for a flagship phone in 2023, because the Gen 2 is already here. We've seen it, for example, in the Galaxy S23 phones. So why did Lenovo go down that particular route? Well, the answer is basically because they designed the ThinkPhone last year. This is a new phone to Australian shores, but it's been available elsewhere prior to Gen 2 phones hitting market. That's why it's a Gen 1 phone. Now, you might complain, well, I'm not getting the current best of breed, and you're not, and you do have to be aware of that. The thing is, though, the Gen 1 is still plenty powerful enough. I mean, this has been a truism, actually, I think, in flagship phones for a while now, that the processes they're putting into them are really fast. They are getting faster. You do get slightly better benchmark results and things like that. But in day-to-day -day usage, it's generally good enough with a few small caveats that I'll get to shortly. The model sold in Australia comes with 8 gig of RAM and 256 gig of storage. It's not the top tier. There is a 12 gig RAM, 512 gig storage model sold internationally for what it's worth. That's not what I've tested with. It's an Android 13 phone. And like so many of Motorola's other offerings, there's really only a light sprinkling of apps on top of that core Android 13 experience, which I really rather prefer. It's not a heavy duty launcher, though you do get things like the fun Moto Actions to do a double shake, for example, to launch the flashlight. Always kind of handy. So from a benchmark performance standpoint, this benchmark's fairly well, certainly at that $999 price point. There are some phones that you can get that will be a little quicker. Uh, the iPhone SE, for example is beastlier, but then that's Apple Silicon for you. I hit Geekbench six scores of 1,806 on single core and 4,729 on multi-core, while 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme scores hit 2,814, if that's important to you. The practical side of this is this is a reasonably fast, reasonably powerful phone. But of course, it's intended to be a little bit more than that. And this is where Motorola's Ready4 software comes into play. Now, Ready4 is a client application that you install onto a Windows PC. You then connect the two and you can do things like easy file sharing, quick hotspot, shared clipboard. All of that stuff's actually quite good. You can also run Android apps that are running on the phone onto your Windows PC. 
That one is a little bit more variable. It does seem to depend on your Wi-Fi signal strength and to a certain extent the phone itself. It's maybe not as quick as it could be, although I suppose on lower power Windows machines that could reverse. My one big caveat with Ready Now, though, is that this is not some new piece of software that they've thrown just onto the ThinkPhone. This is not Motorola going, well, the ThinkPhone's a business phone, so we'd better get into this. No, they've had this available on other phones, including cheaper phones than this. If it's just ready for that entices you, if you don't need that ThinkPad style, then you can do the same thing with a cheaper Motorola device. All right, let's talk cameras. And look, I'll be honest here, Motorola's yet to deliver a camera system that's made me go, wow, that's amazing value for the money. Spoiler, the ThinkPhone doesn't really change that impression. So at the back, you've got dual lenses, one 50 megapixel wide lens and a 13 megapixel ultra wide, which as many ultra wides do, also doubles double duty as a macro lens. At the front, you're taking selfies with a 32 megapixel sensor housed in that hole punch lens. And look, all of this is perfectly serviceable, and that's true for most Motorola phones, really. They don't make bad cameras, they just make ones that are fairly kind of average. So, for example, at $999, you can pick up actual phones with telephoto zoom lenses. This doesn't have that. You just get eight times digital and eight times digital that doesn't really look all that good, honestly. Regular photos are fine. Um, I do think with the selfie camera, the kind of bokeh effect that it provides at the back of my head is a little more artificial than I'd like at this price point, but it's all fairly serviceable, as is the video. I'll throw a, a video sample in here. And look, it all works, it's all fine, and I suppose you could make the argument, look, this is a business phone, it's not meant to be a fun phone, you can leave all the fancy camera optics to people who want that. But I think for most of us, we just want the one phone, and we want the one phone to do everything as well as it possibly can, especially for a thousand bucks. This is an area where I think Motorola could have done a little bit more. On the battery front, the ThinkPhone is rocking a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, rechargeable either via USB-C or wireless. One nice touch here is that you get a 68 watt charger in the box with the phone. Now, that's doubly nice because it's obviously a very high power charger, but also because it's physically there. So many flagship phones emit it these days, so it's nice to see it present. Wireless charging is only 15 watts, that's going to be a heck of a lot slower. In terms of overall battery life, this is a decent sort of performer. And obviously, this depends on how you're using it. So, for example, when I've used the ThinkPhone as a mobile hotspot, yeah, the battery drains down really fast then. But if I was just using it, for example, for video watching, an hour's worth of YouTube video watching, 1080p with full brightness, only drained the battery by about 3%. And that gives it plenty of scope, based on my wider testing, for it to last a full day's battery life, which is basically what you want out of any phone these days. So should you buy the Motorola ThinkPhone? Well, it depends. This is a business phone first and foremost, and it's very much trading on that ThinkPad goodwill. The people who like the ThinkPad style and who want something that reflects that kind of business first thinking. You certainly don't need to buy the ThinkFan just for Ready 4. It is available on other Motorola phones. And Google's doing a few more things with that kind of tighter, almost Mac-esque integration with Windows devices these days. I should point out, by the way, if you are a Mac user, Ready 4 does not work on the Mac. The cameras are not perhaps all they could be, and you can do a little better in that department. But for everyday use, for most normal people's use, yeah, they'll be plenty good enough. The battery life really is rather good. The performance for the price is quite good. And overall, this is a really pleasing sort of package. It's certainly, it's a niche phone. It's not for everyone. But if you've been even vaguely curious about the ThinkPhone, if you've been thinking, hmm, that could be for me, then yeah, I think you'll probably be very, very pleased with this particular handset. Anyway, that's my take on the Motorola ThinkPhone. What do you think? What do you want to know? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching and don't forget to hit like and subscribe.